Welcome everyone, good evening. This is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. One of the most important things we need to understand is that we are witnessing right now election fraud in third world Massachusetts. That's what we're witnessing. And let me explain why I'm saying that in a very rational way, so we all get the facts. Yesterday, I think it was about at, when did we have our meeting, Jen? It was like 10.30 p.m., right? We see a message out on the wires that Galvin, who's, by the way, Secretary of State Galvin, who is the election commissioner, who heads up the elections, he put out a notice, and I, th I found this really odd, saying that 1.2 million Democrats would be voting in the primary, so you can write that number down, and only 150,000 Republicans. Okay, so just think about that number. Now, I'm a math guy. I'm very good at math, okay? I've won every math award in the world, okay? When I was growing up as a kid. It's simple math, you don't even have to win those awards. So, when you look at the data, in Massachusetts, typically there's around 30% Democrats, 10% registered Republicans, and there's another 60% independents, what you call unenrolled. Got those numbers? That's the distribution. So if a million people are gonna vote, you would assume 300,000 Democrats, right? right. 100,000 registered Republicans, and what's the remaining? 600,000 independent, unenrolled. Now those unenrolled people, some of them vote Democrat, some of them vote Republican, right. okay? That's typically percent. Okay, let's just give 50% go Republican and 50% go Democrat. What do you have of that 60%? 30% plus 10% would be 40%, right? 30% plus 30% would be 60%. So you'd have 60% Democrat, 40% Republican. Everyone got those numbers? Okay, that would make sense. If you look at the history of primaries in Massachusetts, in, the, in uh, one of the numbers we looked at was around 550,000 people voted in a primary, which were Democrats. And in that same year, it was around 350,000 Republicans. Got it? That makes sense, right? About, you know, two, two thirds, three to two. Well, does it make any sense that Galvin is announcing before the eve of the election, this is what I called an emergency meeting yesterday, that there was gonna be 1.2 million Democrats voting and only 150,000 Republicans. What's that ratio? It's 10 to one, okay? So I saw those numbers and I called up Jen, I called up Venu, who else was on the phone? Jeremy? Um, Jeremy and, I, and Michelle was there and I said, this is not making sense. I said, something is really, really way off because the calculations I had done was about 325,000 Republicans should be voting in this primary. Okay, about 300,000. How do I get that number? Well, across many of the states that, where they had mail-in ballots, it turns out typically the number of people who voted increased by 20 25%. That makes sense, right? More mail-in ballots, more votes. So in many, so it, if you look, 25% from the previous two-year period, okay? So in Massachusetts, how many how many Republicans voted in the primary? Or how many Republican primary ballots were there in 2018? Guess how many? 250,000, okay? 250,000 people in a primary like this voted. What's 25% more than that? Quick math, it's about, it would be 320,000. So I said, wow, okay, 25% more, we should have 320,000 people. So when I saw Galvin's number, I said, okay, that makes sense because a 25% times about 600, 500,000 would lead to 750,000 because that's what he was predicting that he had already got mail-in ballots. So yesterday he said he got 768,000 Democrat mail-in ballots, but only 88,000 Republican ballots. Okay, 10 to one. Something didn't make sense to me. Does that make any sense? No. It doesn't make any sense intuitively, okay? So I said, okay, maybe it's 88,000, maybe Republicans don't like to do mail-in, so maybe another 240,000 would vote, right, live. Which still gets me to that 320,000 numbers, but 
the way the election is looking, Gal how did Galvin know only 150,000 people are going to vote? That's what I want to know. Okay? So what we see is these numbers don't make sense. Separate from all of that, all of us have been on the ground, right? All of us. Yeah. Have we even seen one freaking lawn sign by this guy O'Connor? Nope. No, Not no, one no. lawn sign. No. This guy is a joke. He came out of nowhere. Not one lawn sign. He didn't take out billboard ads. He didn't take out TV. He didn't take, no one even know, knows his name. We were just in Danvers, right? The Danvers RTC chairman passes by. He goes, Shiva, you got this. He goes, we were out there. You got this. It's a landslide. We were Mark Warden in Attleboro, landslide. That's what we've been hearing, haven't we? Yeah. How many places have we heard people honking, beeping everywhere? People don't, people would ask us, who are you running against? They don't even know this guy. Andrew here, Andrew, you do sales. How many people do sales and marketing? Anyone? I'll tell you, I've been doing sales and marketing all my life. You build your funnel, which is called your prospects. You spend advertising and marketing to get your prospects. And then you, you, you talk to them, which is basically sales. And then you close them. We've talked to probably, you know, the number of people, eyeballs have seen us, probably everyone in the state, at least 20 million eyeball views. Do you know what I'm saying? Not 20 million people. So pretty much everyone in the state, we probably have 95% visibility. Do you know this is the first election that no polls were conducted? No polls. Last time there were four polls conducted because they were afraid of us. This is what they do in third world countries, third world Massachusetts. That's what we're witnessing right now. To all of you people listening, what we're talking about is we literally have election fraud taking place. Because when you look at those numbers, how does a fool who doesn't have any lawn signs out there, no one even knows his name, all of us have a pretty good sample size here, is beating us by 50% consistently. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. Dan, does it make sense? No. Where's Jeremy? Jeremy, does this make sense? Jeremy, Jeremy, what did you say we were going to win by? We got it, right? Landslide. Vincent, are you here? Vincent, what was a word you first said when you walked in here? Fraud, right? We're watching fraud taking place. That's what we're witnessing. The numbers don't, what's that, John? And it's about the same numbers in every town. This guy's a fool. He, he didn't campaign. We went all over the state. 250 people showed up in a big parking lot in Chicopee. No one had heard of this guy. How does this happen? This is what happens in third world countries. Some forces choose some puppet and then he's out there. Charlie Baker said he voted for him, right? Everyone heard that, right? As of today he's leaving the polls. He's actually not supposed to do that, right? The mass GOP was sending out mailers for him. They're not supposed to do that. It's illegal. Massachusetts got the 10th worst rating as the lowest in public in integrity, D+. I'm telling you, we're living in a freaking third world country. That's why this, that's why this state is F minus minus infrastructure. There's a reason that the founders put the second amendment there. And I'm not saying this in any alarmist way, but we're watching tonight election fraud taking place. That's what we're witnessing because no one knew about this guy, no one. I'm talking about on the ground. We went to 16 cities yesterday, right? In the last three days. Jen, you, we did all those SMS messages, right? People would say, who are you running against? No one knows this guy. So that's what we're witnessing. So the question is, what do we want to do? And I've always been open and transparent with everything. So we've called a meeting here. We have about 40, 50 people here. And by the way, 40, 50 people have shown up among the thousands of volunteers we have in our WhatsApp groups. And everyone here is a dedicated volunteer. People have busted their buns. So what we're witnessing is fraud. That's what we're witnessing. So what should we do? That's the question. What do you guys want to do? Fight. 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 We fight it. What? We fight. What do you say? Right. So he's saying, let the truth come out. But you're living in a world right now where Charlie Baker, let's remember what he did to Mark Fisher. 
In 2014, Charlie Baker, the governor, the corrupt governor, whose son molested a woman on an airplane, and we never heard about it again, right? Hidden. Charlie Baker in 2014 was challenged by a work, a good working guy called Mark Fisher in the Republican convention here in Massachusetts. Good guy, an engineer who built his own company all by himself, etc. Well, it turned out that in order to get on the ballot, you needed 30% of the convention voters. Mark went into that with 30%, I mean 15%, right? He went into that with 30%, you know, agreed to him. Turns out he only gets 14.9%, which is below the 15% limit, okay? A very good friend of mine who I met through this process, Navy SEAL, he said, Shiva, I was on the stage doing the announcement. They were shredding Mark's ballot in the back room. Shredding them. That's what Charlie Baker does. Well, Mark sued the Massachusetts GOP. They settled out of court for $250,000, and Jeff Cooner, scumbags like him, set up Mark. People like Howie Carr set up Mark Fisher. These people are the not-so-obvious establishment of the white working class, just like Bernie Sanders and Al Sharpton, the not-so-obvious establishment of the left and the so-called you know, black people. We have the not-so-obvious establishment on both sides. Cooner set up Fisher. That's how they work it, right? They act like they're Trumpers and all this kind of stuff. But the bottom line is Mark Fisher sued and they settled out of court because they had all the ballot information. This has occurred before. There's no way a guy with no name visibility gets 60%. No, no. Right? Does that ever happen? No, no, it's no. never happened in sales. No one, you know, it doesn't happen. Unless, maybe I'll give this to him. He's doing some amazing marketing technique that I know nothing about. And, and, if, and if, if he's done something amazingly incredible where he can spend nothing and get this kind of visibility, then he should get a professorship at some major university as a marketing professor, a genius. It doesn't occur. It doesn't occur. So I think the most important thing that we get out of tonight that we need to recognize is that Massachusetts has in fact devolved into a complete third world country. That's what we should take away. That's where it is. That's where it is. And it shouldn't be something we should get depressed about. It should be something where we take away the rose colored glasses and we look at things as they are. And that's what it is. And one of the greatest things in spiritual teachings is seeing things as they are. And that's where we're at. That's where we're at. So first thing is we need to understand this because this, our movement is for truth, freedom, and health. But we're witnessing election fraud and God save us, we have the second amendment. That's pretty much what I have to say, unless everyone wants to add anything. So, fuck Kevin O'Connor, fuck Charlie Baker, screw all these guys, because they're all frauds, they've never worked a day in their life, and screw them. They're scumbags. Okay? What's that? Truth, freedom, and health. 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 And that's what we'll continue to do, okay? There's nothing stopping us. This is just the beginning because we're going to go after these guys. And there's enough people in this state who've gotten it. And I'm telling you, it's at least, this election was just stolen from us. It should have been 80-20. They just stole about 200,000 votes. There's no reason that the Secretary of State gets the night before and he says, we're only gonna have 150,000 votes. We're, that means he threw away, he's getting ready to throw away about 200,000 votes. And I'll tell you this other thing. In all campaign models, on the, do you know what happens during the five days before the election comes? It's called Go TV. have you ever heard of this? Get out the vote. You just go type in GOTV. It's called get out the vote. And, the, and what you're supposed to do is, you know, we built our infrastructure, we built our volunteers, but the five days before the election, what you focus on is you focus on finding your supporters who already are, said they're gonna vote for you, and you make sure they're gonna vote. And the goal is, the math of that goes like this. If you know an election is gonna have 100,000 people voting total, you wanna, in order to win, how many do you need? 51%, so you need 510,000, I'm sorry, 51,000 votes. Everyone got that? Yep. 
And the election model is, during that five-day period, it's a 10 to 1 ratio. You try to get at least 5,100 people saying, yes, I'm going to vote for Shiva, or they're going to vote for you. It's a 10% rule. So if you know you can get 5,100 people definitive, that means you've multiplied that by 10, you'll get 5,100. So we assumed there was going to be about 400,000 people. We have it all documented. People have been pounding away for the last five days. We have 20,132 people who said, yes, we're going to vote for you. That individual, many of them said, I have five other people are going to vote, 10 other people, 30 other people. So we got that. So if you multiplied that by 10, I knew that we had at least 210,000 votes, at least. Yeah. So when Galvin said 150,000, I said, something's wrong. So they just stole about, I know they stole at least 100 to 150,000 votes. That's what they did. So that's the math. The math never lies. I've never gotten, you know, I, I got a 800 out of 800. You know the SATs? Yeah. You broke the 10. <laughs> In the math, okay? Yeah. I won the New Jersey mathematics. And so I, I know math. These guys are lying and they're full of, they're criminals. And this is why they want to divide police from the people. Because in every major movement, when people really get upset, the police always come to the side of the people. Always. So they want to divide black and white, black people from the police, because they know that they have to do stuff to keep the police from us. And that's where we're at in this country. We're in a situation now where people are got to criminal levels. Charlie Baker is a freaking criminal. He's a freaking criminal. So anyway, the good news is we know what, what's going on and we have an opportunity to change this, which means we explode this movement for truth, freedom, and health. We're not gonna compromise one level. We escalate, we escalate this movement and the only thing we tell Mr. Cock for Senate, this is website, you know, we treat him as what he is. Because Charlie Baker was blowing smoke up people's you know what, and now he thought he could shove you know what somewhere, okay? And that's what he tried to do right here. So can you still be on the ballot in November? Is it either right in? We can write in, we can do that, but I think there's a bigger, bigger opportunity here yeah. now. They'll yeah. shred those ballots. Too. They'll shred those ballots. Look, Charlie Baker was actually shredding Mark Fisher's ballots. Let's just get it clear, the establishment, what we've shown, we did an experiment, that's what we did. We've shown the establishment is one, they're one. They do not want an outsider like me. They'll put a fool against another fool. It's all theatrics. The only thing that's real is what we did over the last seven, eight months. What we did was real, right? What they did is bullshit, okay? What we did was real. We went, we met with people, we educated people, and that's what's real. And we should escalate that. No more forced vaccinations. We will escalate that movement on the Boston Commons. Yeah. We're going to bring yeah. people and police together. Yeah. People and police united. Yeah. No forced vaccinations. People and police united against them. That's what we're going to do. We're going to unite working people against them every step of the way. That's what's going to happen. They're going to have an army of people watching them now. We're not going to let them get away with anything. This is just the beginning. They've unleashed a revolutionary movement. Yeah, That's what absolutely. got unleashed today. Absolutely. They've unleashed a revolution. Yeah. And we have, we have the infrastructure now. We have volunteers in every, yeah. every yeah. county. We have 351,000 groups. People are ready. And if necessary, we got the Second Amendment, okay? Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's go win. We win, we escalate the movement. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.